Hello! In this video, I'm gonna show you the first things that I recommend doing after setting up your Google Pixel 9a. Once your Pixel has been set up, um, there are a few things that you should start with to ensure a smooth, um, smooth usage of your phone and also to ensure it runs securely and, all, and to enhance your experience. So the first thing is connecting to Wi-Fi. I know that probably you already have done that, but if you haven't, then in settings go to network and internet, internet and um, I have my mobile data connected, but I will use Wi-Fi because I don't want to use my mobile data since it has a limited plan and um, I will need some internet in a moment. So let's just select a Wi-Fi network to connect to, maybe not this one, but this one, and enter its password. And if it was entered correctly, then it should say connect it right here and display the Wi-Fi symbol on the status bar at the very top. Now, so once that's done, you should go to mm, the system updates. Updating your system is very important to ensure that your phone runs smoothly, securely and has the newest features. So let's scroll all the way down, almost all the way down and find system. Then software updates and system update. It says that my system is up to date, but if yours is not, it'll give you a button to download and install. First, it'll start downloading and you can continue using your phone in the process, but later on, it'll prompt you to restart your phone and you just need to restart it or schedule it to restart at night. And um, uh, after the restart, the update will be applied. Now, let's go to uh, signing in to Google account. Uh, if you have done that, then skip to the next step. But uh, if you haven't uh, or don't know if you have, then go to passwords, pass keys and accounts in settings. And if under accounts of, for owner, there is no Google account, click on add account, then Google. And now I'm gonna go ahead and enter my email. Um, if you uh, don't have an account, click on create account here. Then just click on next and enter the password, which I'm gonna do off camera. And now it'll ask you who will be using this device, either you or your child. If you select your child, then the further steps may vary, but most probably you will be using it. So let's just click on next. Now uh, you need to agree to the Google Terms of Service. Without that, you can continue with adding the account. And now I'm gonna select the backup to be enabled. Uh, it is up to you, but uh, I think it's better to have the backup enabled so you don't lose your data in case anything happens to your phone. So let's just accept that. Now, mm, once that's done, we can go to the placer. I'm just gonna click on get started and you can select whether you wanna verify your purchases with password, uh, with a Google account password or with biometrics. I don't have biometrics set up just yet. I'm gonna show you that in a moment. So let's just use the password now. And now I'm in, so let's click on the profile icon in top right corner. It has crashed, but it's normal because I just finished setting up the phone a moment ago and just connected to the Wi-Fi for the first time a moment ago. So it just is updating the Play Store. So I'm gonna wait a few seconds, then go to the Play Store. And here we're gonna go ahead and update the apps that we have on the phone. It is important to update the apps for the very same reason as updating your system. Um, but also some apps just won't work without an update. So let's go to the Play Store. I'm gonna skip this additional apps, then click on the profile icon top right corner, manage apps and device, updates available. You can see I, can, I have 44 updates available. So I'm gonna update all. Um, now let's get to the settings. I said that I don't have biometrics set up just yet. I actually don't have um, a screen lock set even. So it is pretty, pretty crucial to have a screen lock 
so no one else besides you has access to your phone but you can also set the um, biometric which is uh, the fingerprint so uh, you can unlock your phone faster and more conveniently so in the security and privacy in settings go to device unlock then if screen lock says swipe or none then it, i highly recommend setting it to pattern pin or password depending on your preference but before we do that you need to know that um, in case you forget that screen lock then there will be no other way to restore your phone than to erase all its data uh, so um, if you erase all its data then um, you'll just lose anything uh, so uh, ma please make sure that you will remember your screen lock but i think it's still worth having one uh, like I said, so no one else has access. And I'm gonna select the pattern, then I'm gonna draw it, click on next and redraw it, and confirm that. Then select what will happen with the lock screen notifications. And I'm gonna select the show screen, uh, sensitive content only when unlocked. I think this is the best option that you can set. Then click on done. And then there is the face and fingerprint unlock. And I'm gonna enter my screen lock then i'm gonna set the fingerprint unlock first mm, and then i'm gonna talk a bit about the face unlock so in the fingerprint unlock just click on more agree start and place your finger um, on the fingerprint sensor which is under the screen and it may not work with some screen protectors you can try it out but if it doesn't work maybe it's your screen protector's fault because this phone has a, an ultrasonic Mm, fingerprint sensor which is better uh, because it is um, more secure but mm, unfortunately doesn't work with some screen protectors just tap and release several times remember to move your finger between each scan so it scans the whole area of your fingerprint in my case it goes without any problems since I don't have a screen protector on also, if you um, set it up without the screen protector, then put it on, it also may not work. You can also add another fingerprint and click on done. Um, then the face unlock, I don't recommend setting it up because in, on this phone, it only bases on the camera. There are phones on the market that base on IR sensors, but this one only bases on the camera, which means that it can be unlocked with a photo of you or by someone who looks similar to you. Um, so I really um, don't recommend it but if you really need to do it you can just set it up you just need to look at the camera for a moment it'll be set up um, now I'm gonna show you both ways of unlocking your phone so with a fingerprint sensor you just need to tap in the correct spot it doesn't matter if the screen is on or off you just need to know the correct spot and it'll unlock it yeah but unfortunately I don't know the spot you can also just tap on the screen so you know where the um, sensor is. I'm gonna try to locate it. No, actually, it doesn't. I think it doesn't work with the uh, with the screen off. Yeah, you just need to tap, then tap on the fingerprint sensor, and it's done. Or if the always on display is on, if you raise your phone, then it'll also work. And now, um, and to unlock with the uh, screen lock, you just need to swipe up, then enter that. And now let's get to the next part, which is setting up Google Pay. Um, so just find the Google Wallet, or if you don't have it, just like me, uh, go to the Play Store. I'm gonna go back and go to the search, then search for Google Wallet. and click on install. And by the way, that's exactly how you install apps on this phone. So now once it's updated, uh, you can go into that. Wait a moment, then click on allow, add to wallet, payment card, and uh, you can just enter the details of your credit or debit card. Of course, if you don't want to, then you don't need to get that app, but 
it'll help you to um, it'll let you uh, enable that option which is tap to pay so you can use your phone to tap to pay without reaching out to your wallet um, and uh, in order to pay with it you need to have the credit or debit card added first then confirm with your bank via message phone call or a, a bank app and um, later on whenever your phone is unlocked and the wallet apps opened which by the way i think you can also open by sliding down from the top of your screen twice then you'll see the wallet no i didn't mean to turn on the airplane mode mm. so you can tap on the wallet then it'll open the wallet app um, i'm not really sure if you need to select the card or it'll just be on uh, but maybe you just need to click on a card here which one you want to pay with and tap your phone to the reader and don't worry it is secure because it is bank authorized and it's provided by google so um it's not some sort of a scam uh, then now uh, let's get to changing the wallpaper i know a lot of people do change their wallpapers so you can set something um provided by pixel because there will be some wallpapers that are provided by google in the settings but i think the best ones are your personal one so you can download some pictures from the internet you might have transferred your pictures from the previous device so you can also use them or take a picture now I'm gonna take a picture now because I don't think I have any photos right now yeah it's not the best photo but um, I'm gonna try setting it um, let's just go to settings then wallpaper and style and now you can set it for either lock screen or home screen depending on which one you actually want to set mm, so i'm just gonna click on more wallpapers you can see different wallpapers from google here but i'm gonna select my photos then mm, allow all access to the photo gallery let's try again camera this photo okay and now i can see how it look on the lock screen and how it will look on the home screen uh, so you can tap to edit the photo by adjusting its position and stuff I think it's not the worst one well, not the worst one um, you can also click on that it'll turn on some 3d and motion effects let's try that out why not Yeah, or maybe not because it takes quite a long time or no actually i can enable it so it'll just process it and enable some effects whatever it means yeah and this is just a bit animated i think it doesn't look too bad not even half bad so um yeah i think i like it it's not also yeah it's not the best because it has distorted some items but i think i like it let's just set it you can set it to either lock screen or home screen i'm gonna only set it to the lock screen then click on set and once it's set you can also customize the clock so you can for example change the clock to that or just click on clock but i don't know why on the preview it's this not my wallpaper let's see if it has changed it hasn't so um let's try no it says it's set so i'm just gonna try looking at it yeah it should work honestly let's try going to the settings again wallpaper and style yeah it just yeah and now it works so i just had to like set it to a different one then go back to the one that i wanted um as you can see i can set different clocks as i said uh, i think i really like this one um but you can also change uh, the colors on the wallpaper and colors of the clock 
So let's set a color of the clock to something maybe not that vibrant. But I think I can also change its brightness here or maybe not. Yeah, never mind. Um, let's just set it to that, then go back. And now it's set. So um, let's see if it works. Yes, it does. And now um, I think that's it. This phone doesn't come with any bloatware whatsoever. These are all the apps that are on this phone. So um, it is really great. And yeah, the last thing that you can do is finish setting up your device. You'll get this notification um, probably right after the setup. It's great to just finish it now so you're not bothered later. And at first it'll ask you if you want to set up using another device to copy settings accounts, data, files, uh, apps and whatever from your another phone or tablet. So if you do, then select either of those options and do that now, because later, if you skip it now, then it may become unavailable. Um, because it's not available through the settings, you can only use it if it asks you to do it during the setup or post setup um, process. So if you skip it now, then there's a chance you will be asked um, again one one more time, but it's not a 100% chance. And of course, you can copy apps and data from another device using third party apps, but I think it's the best to do it with the native uh, method because it will just, just work without any problems and will copy probably the most data that it can. So I'm gonna skip it because I don't have any device to copy it from, but if you have, then just follow the instructions on the screen. They are gonna be pretty intuitive. Then I'm gonna confirm my pattern for some reason. And it asks me to set up the face unlock, but how I said, I don't like it. And um, I'm gonna click on not now. Then, mm, this is the last time I'm asked about copying apps and data. Then uh, I think it's it's only asked in the European Union, but I'm not sure it, it's that to choose your default browser as search engine. So if you don't know which ones to choose, I'm gonna recommend a few. Uh, the Firefox, the Opera, Brave and Chrome are my all time favorites. Um, I usually select the Chrome just because it's the most default thing for Android, but these are the ones that I recommend, but feel free to choose whichever one you'd like to try out. Then uh, the search engine, the only one that I like is the Google. The other ones I find not as effective. Then just click on next. More, more. You can use Gemini or not now, depending on your preference. The Gemini is your AI assistant. Then it asks you about the Google Wallet if you haven't set it up. So I've already talked about it. Uh, I'm gonna click on no thanks um, because I don't want any emails. Now it asks you if you want to set up a few more things at the end. I'm just gonna click on done. And now I'm all set up. That's all for today. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.